A couple of months ago, I decided to build my take on a Husky 501 rally. Yes! Our next adventure build, build number seven. And here it is, it's complete. And today in episode three, and the final episode of the build, we're gonna look at suspension in detail, we're gonna look at this rack, and we're gonna look at how to fit graphics to this bike because it's a cracking looking bike. Now, if you haven't subscribed to Mad TV before, please come on board. We do three things. My favorite is long form motorcycle adventure movies, but we also do very detailed tests where we actually ride the bikes thousands of kilometers before talking about them. And finally, we do bike builds, and I've done seven bike builds, and this is our final one. So come on, join us on Mad TV. long-term subscribers you already know I've taken the completed bike for a decent adventure with my riding buddy Nugget. It's fair to say I've been rewarded with a crackingly capable Husky 501 Rally. In this third and final build episode I head to Motorcycle Biz and Clive Ward also known as the Professor to focus on suspension upgrades and we go into this in some detail, which is very useful for anyone considering upgrading their suspension on any bike. I also fit the True North Moto's luggage rack and learn how to fit the whole shot graphics kit to the bike. Okay, started to fit the True North Moto's rack. That's stage one, just getting that connected and keep that loose. And then uh, hopefully we'll fiddle and get these other connections on down here. When you buy a Husky 501 or KTM 500, you are indoctrinated into this cult of dirt-oriented adventure riders throughout the world that adore these bikes. They are an industrious clever bunch who build good shit for their bikes. Their mates see it and boom, the next thing they know, they are fabricators in a cottage industry. True North Motos are a great example of this. Two mates that epitomise this story. And this rack is a cracker. It's ideal for carrying a range of soft luggage and it also reinforces the subframe. The rack fitted perfectly and the video instructions on their YouTube and website provided useful step-by-step -step instruction. It was Late very easy night. to fit. And the bike is all but finished. Clive Ward from Motorcycle Beers, so good to see you, mate. I've done as much as I can, now it's your magic. How do you, what do you reckon so far? Well, I'm pretty impressed with what you've done, Dave. I can see you've got the Cush Drive hub in that we talked about. Yep. I like this rack. It's uh, going to strengthen that whole frame up, and it's going to take plenty of the load off the plastic composite rear end, so that should absorb all the load, really, and support down here. You can see you've extended your oil range with the bigger clutch cover and that. So yeah. what'd you get? 200 mil, 220 mil? 220 mil in that with the sight glass in the middle. I could probably go to 250 if I lifted it, but I've just got it in the middle at the moment. That'll definitely help to keep it the oil cooler and make it last longer. And yeah. um, I haven't seen this tower before and it looks like it's quite from, a nice fit. It's from Portugal to father and son team make them. So you've upgraded your tyres, so you've gone heavy duty tubes, I take it as well? Yeah, on the back, yeah. It's one big tie, Dave. It's a, I think it's over tired, but I'm, I, it, it seems to have just, made it. It only just fits, but yeah. Yeah, I used a couple of big screwdrivers and a hammer to get it in, but it worked. She should be a roost throw on wheelie machine, I reckon, with that thing on there. Yeah. Did you change your gearing at all? No, no, I left the gearing standard at the moment. Yeah. You're going to go one up on the front and. Oh, I'll, make I'll it listen a bit to your taller. advice on that. Yeah, well, I'll see how it goes, I suppose. You might want to go up one tooth and just stretch its legs out a bit more. Yep. When you're on the doing any sort of transport or highway type sections. Yeah. So right yeah, let's see what it weighs. Yeah, what do you reckon? Oh, I think it'll be just feeling the front. It's going to be pretty heavy. Yeah, so it's fuel full, 17 litres in the tank. 
that's about uh, eight kilo, eight liters more than stock, which would be about an extra six kilos. Plus your towel, which you say what? No, I three think it's kilos. three kilos. Yeah. About an extra nine kilos over the front. Yeah. Oh, the drum's rolling. Whoa. What's that? So 73.5 on the rear. And 67.8 on the front. Alrighty. That's going to be pretty close to what you said. What did you say? 140? I said 140. That's pretty much exactly what it is, isn't it? It is. One, it is. 140. 141. 140 fuel full. 140. 141 fuel full. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And the extra oil and the cush drive and the wow. rack and the tower. Yeah. Still not bad, is it? Fuel full. Fuel full. Yep. Yep. I was thinking around 150, so I was way off the mark. Yeah. Those of you who guessed 120 and 130, they were way Got off the, the mark. mark. Yeah. And you were pretty much spot on at your 140. Maybe you cheated. And no, 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 no later. cheating, no cheating, <laughs> no cheating. Yeah, no, that's good. That's very good. Right, yeah. So we'll All do right. some calculations. I'll add your enormous weight to it. Yeah. And come up with some figures on the springs, and we'll get some oh. springs in. And Clive, what do you got planned for uh, the bike? So we're going to fit a KTEC kit to the front end. Yep. And I'll explain what we change in here. This is the Explore cartridge from the left leg. It's got a hole drilled here in the seal head and that is the guide piston that runs around up and down inside it and you can see that that's just full of holes. Yep. And it really does very little to compression dampening even though it's got compression written on the left leg. This is the, car the piston out of the bottom of your right leg and that's where 80 to 90 percent of your compression dampening is done on the Explore fork. You also notice it has no bleed hole in it and no adjuster. Right. We're going to change it to this kit supplied by KTEC and it's going to give us symmetrical dampening in the two forks. So we're going to replace the seal head with the hole with one that doesn't have a hole. We're going to replace this valve and the one on the other cartridge rod with two new piston valves that have adjustable mid valves and rebound in both. And then we're going to replace these base valves with this one, which has a bleed circuit, an adjuster, and a better piston all round. So you're going to get symmetrical dampening, compression in the bottom of both, rebound in the top of both. Then when we get your shock out, we're going to take this off the shock, which is the piston. Yeah. What you'll notice is it takes quite a bit of force to get that piston to start moving, mm -hmm. we're going to replace it with a bladder. And the bladder is going to be suspended in the middle of that with nitrogen on this side, oil on this side, and as soon as any force is applied to it, the bladder flexes. Wow. So it reduces the stiction friction. We're also going to take the standard piston band off the piston, which is a plastic sort of composite one that's quite sticky and causes a lot of stiction as well and replace it with a KTEC one, which is the old style, it's a bronze bush with a Teflon coating and that will get rid of a lot more stiction and it will make the body last longer in that shock because there will be less wear and tear on it. We'll also revalve it and then we'll put the springs in to match the new weights of the bike and you as a combination that we'll calculate shortly. And then we'll finish up with a, an X trig so I can just alter that for. Absolutely, got an X trig there for you to put it in. Good on you. And we'll dyno test it all and give you all the results so you can see the, the before and afters. Mate, looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. Okay, well, let's oh. get into it. Okay. Back at Motorcycle Biz, this is like Christmas Day for us. Clive's here, my suspension's off. What's going on, mate? Hey, Dave, how are you? Good, mate. We've already stripped the parts out. I've right. got them all sitting out the back. Come yep. through and I'll show you what the plan is. Oh, look at that. Let's have a look. Oh, God, it's like Christmas. New parts. We've got some new springs, front and rear. We've got the new piston valves, adjustable bases, 
and valves that are going to go in the forks. We've got an X trig adjuster to make for easy preload adjustment. We've got a bladder kit and we've got new low friction piston band. All that will be going in your shock. Journey begins. Forks first. Alright, so we've pulled the springs out of the fork, so we're just going to do a pre-measure of the damping as they came, and then you'll have a comparison when we finish it. So yep. I'll just run it through the test now. No, oh, there's your same thing, isn't it? That's your stock compression valve out of the bottom of the right leg. Yep. That's where 75% of the compression is made in this fork mm -hmm. in the bottom and it's got no adjuster and no bleed which is why they kind of feel harsh on small bumps but then they blow through on bigger bumps. Mm -hmm. If you pack it full of more shims, yeah, you get more compression dampening but you make it harsher on small bumps. So by replacing it with this one, it's got large bleed base, adjustable base, so we can we can get it to bleed and get comfort on the small bumps and we'll be able to get the high speed compression down there we're looking for but we'll put them in both so you both are adjustable and then we'll remove the guide valve which is in the left fork and replace it with one of these so you've got mid valve compression and rebound in the left one as well forward to this result. Very interesting. Anyway. So Clive, we've done the test. How we go? How we go? How's the I'm student? I'm happy with the result now. So we've added about 25% to your high speed compression dampening. Just point where that one is. Up that's here. This, this, that, that's the up red here. line up here. This red line. See yep. how much more it is? Yep. And we've raised it through the whole range, so it's got some mid valve pickup on that now. Yeah. We've increased your rebound to match your new springs. Yeah. And um, it's up almost at 500 newtons there. So yeah. that's your mix between your blue and your red. I can mm -hmm. just highlight that red even more to see just how much different it is. Yeah. So now we'll put your new springs in and put them back in and start on the shock. Yeah. And. So I can still alter that now because I've got the um, the, the, the different adjustment. Yeah, you've I, got compression adjustment on, on the, the bottom, bottom of both and yeah. rebound adjustment on the top, top of both. Yeah. And the damping is symmetrical and equal between the two forks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if I'm hunting a bit more trail feel after we do this, then I just progressively work on that with the, with the cut adjustments. Cut the clicks one way, cut the clicks the other, other way and see which way swing. makes the improvement. Yep. Yeah. Just All chasing right. that final fine tuning that you're looking for. Exciting. So forks are done, starting on the shock, rear shock. Clive's giving me a task to do. I've got to push this up and down in here. It's very... <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's sticky is a word I'd say. Alright. Just drive the piston band off. In the bin. New K Tech bronze with Teflon coated one. Ceiling O ring. Now, yeah, try that again, Dave. Alright, here we go. In. Holy cow. 
Huge difference, Clive. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, it makes a huge difference for sure. And it also reduces the drag on the body of the housing itself, which is anodized. Right. So if you don't switch to one of these, within about 100 hours of use, it starts to take the anodizing off the body, and then we have to actually replace this whole tube there. Right. Which is not cheap. That reduces the drag so much that we find that after a couple of hundred hours, the anodizing's still good. Wow. And it's still not worn out. Now, let's get this bladder on, and that'll be the next part of reducing the friction point and making it even easier to respond to ter uh, terrain changes. Mm, you can smell uh, a rear shock cooking. Now, once it starts to smoke, we should be able to get it off. Kids, don't try this at home. This is why we have specialists. <laughs> yeah, so here they are. So again, how much pressure it takes mm. to start making it move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? And when you've got a, a diaphragm, it's surrounded by oil on this side, gas on the other. So it just flexes immediately. Wow. As soon as you put any pressure on it, there's no friction point for a bladder. Right. Uh, a bladder's going on. We've gone from piston to bladder. So, the, so what we're chasing here is um, the normal way that you increase the preload on your spring. So if you're adventure riding, you probably want to increase your preload if you've got more luggage. Is to, is to wind these two bands right. and then they... It's a single plastic adjuster. Yeah. So once you start adjusting this a fair bit, the plastic starts to break down. Yeah. So if you're going to be changing loads fairly often and going from riding the bike loaded to unloaded, you're going to be playing with this all the time. Yeah. You're going to wear this component out pretty easy and it's all going to... And it's also quite difficult to do. Yeah. Whereas... So this, this will adjust yeah. it with an 8mm either T-bar or quarter drive socket. So mm -hmm. we'll screw that onto the body and it will sit in a nice easy position to get at and you'll be able to just really quickly with a with an 8mm socket or T-bar adjust your preload depending on the luggage you're carrying on the, time, on the day. Yeah. Now we've seen this out in the bush before and I might revert to some file footage. You might recall Nugget on our last uh, Coffs Harbour ride. He noticed his um, preload was too soft and he wanted to change it. And so he had to fiddle around with these things. Um, the beauty of the X-Trig is you just wind it up or you wind it back. And that's why all my bikes are fitted with X-Trigs. Because they just make adjusting to the weight to make sure your static sag is right. Um, they're, they're great because you can just very quickly alter the spring to make sure it's the correct for the static sag. Quick way of doing it. That gives you an idea of what it does. That's a fast forward way of showing what the X-Trig does. That would be increasing preload and the other way would be decreasing preload. Now you'll be able to do it with yeah, the T-bar. T-bar, yeah. Easy. And if you're going to fit one, remember to fit it before you reassemble the shock because it won't fit over the head of the shock. This part. Mm. Right, fit over there. And that's a good question. How do you get the oil back in? Ah, oh, <coughs> oh, through that port there at the bottom. Pull all the air out of it first, and then we'll pressure fill it so it gets no air inside it at all before we recharge it with gas. Mm, let's start it up. Is 
air inside your oil. Right. So even when you buy it in a can in a container, mm. air is trapped inside the oil. Wow. The only way to separate it is to pull it down her 30 inches of mercury. Yeah. And that will boil the air out of the oil, which is what you can see here is this air wow. boiling out of the oil. That's crazy. But when you put the oil in there, you couldn't see any air in it. No. Once that's all boiled down, it'll also be pulling any air that's trapped inside here out, so it'll be in vacuum. Yeah. And then we'll use air pressure to push on the top of the oil, push the oil down, and it'll go up through that tube and into mm -hmm. here. And we'll do that two or three times until it can rotate it to get all the trapped air and bubbles out of the shock so that the shock's filled only with oil, no mm -hmm. air at all, mm -hmm. before we recharge the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little dance you're doing with my shop. So all the little air bubbles coming through. Oh wow. Yep. yep. So we're shaking all the air out of the various little <coughs> spots it gets trapped. Yep. So we're going to charge the gas system. This has got a self-sealing um, plug in the top here. Mm -hmm. So we use a 22 gauge needle which I buy in boxes of 100 on a little adapter. Slide that in through the top, so it's in the space inside the bladder. Turn the nitrogen on. Hundred and sixty psi. We're done. Don't stab yourself with the needle. Okay. Now this is the crunch time, the new shock with all its new modifications put back on the dyno. So let's see the difference. Looking forward to this. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Right where we need to be. On goes the spring for my heavier gut. all this work a couple of stickers gotta be happy with that final touches <laughs> come back up 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 and up oh, 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 close now Clive the rally's born looks that way Played hard, done well. Do the sag. Yeah, let's have a look at the sag now. This will be interesting. Uninitiated, this is the way to do it. You can wind it up 46. All right, Clive, static sad. I get my sorry backside on this bike. All right, you want me standing? Yep. Let's give it a shake. That's 102 there now. 102. So once you put some gear on and you have a little tail bag on there, that'll be about right. Yep. That's at. I'll just jump off for a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, jump off. That's at 30 mil, 38 mil static sag. Yep. So you'll be able to still dial in more preload. Yep. Still have a bit of static sag and yes. take that load. Take those extra loads better. So yep. when you've got the giant loop around there, all strapped on, just full of tools and an overnight bag stuff. Yep. Just tighten it up a bit. Beautiful. Test ride time. Test ride time. I like that. Thanks, mate. Anyway, here, let me shake your hand, buddy. No worries. Thank you. Happy to help. 
okay we're heading to whole shot graphics pick up the graphics kit and get a lesson how to how to apply the graphics so they stay on your bike hey brett you around ah, so there's some of this stuff hey, morning mate, dave how are i'm good thank you mate how are you all right looking forward to seeing this kit come on up come on up cammy's just started the uh oh, wow. the morning print for the day the morning run wow so that'll run through there and then we'll hang them up for 24 hours let them dry laminate them and ship them out to the customers mate mate uh, that's brilliant so customers can do their own design you know what, what can they uh, do what sort of, sorts of things no you got? not really they're all most of them are web kits so right. cameron's got all you know probably two or three hundred different designs on his on his website right so sorry this is cameron hi cam my son going? he manages whole shot graphics yep. for me um so the main 90 percent of the time they can we have enough on the website for them to pick a kit that they like and they can throw on their own sponsors their own numbers right their name but yes we do do custom kits as well so yeah, if someone yeah. wants something totally unique they give us a brief and yeah. we'll just make them happy at yeah the end of the day. yeah this pension a plane model i've got so <laughs> <laughs> i reckon it looks pretty flash though i had a look at yeah, something yeah this is you so this mate. is what we got here mate so oh wow the oh, mad tv it. there got out love that so that's as brilliant. you know that only took yeah, we, we bounce a few ideas back, you give us a brief, and we've in, yeah, yeah two or three variations, we, we nailed it on the head, so oh, we're good to go. Right, while we're out here, we might as well get a lesson from the expert as to how to apply these graphics so they stay on. Sure, okay. Cuts for the bikes. So what's that off, Cam? Uh, it's actually just a bit of a custom design. Um, it's off KDM. Um, it's just racing grassroots, so you have to have specific color backgrounds right yeah so that had a bronze background we did a custom kit for him early in the year so we're just trying to adapt uh the the bronze into what usually um was a uh i'll pull it up um it was quite a oh, right. kit. yeah so right we, now okay to, um yeah do a color background for him i'm with brett from whole shot graphics and he's going to give us a bit of tuition today as to how to get these decals on and to stay on. Hello everybody. Yep, a lot of people think it's a dark art to put in graphics on. If you just take your time, have the right equipment, you shouldn't have any problems at all. So first of all, we have our graphic, our plastic, and the tools we're going to need today is some isopropyl, which you can just also use um, alcohol from or metho from Bunnings. That'll basically just take all the impurities off the off the kit, off the um, uh, plastics from manufacture. We've got a pair of scissors, a nice sharp blade, and a glove. This is actually a wrapping glove that we use for wrapping vehicles as well, but you can just use your motocross glove uh, with a little bit of water on it to help it slide. So the gloves to help it slide. So first of all, we give the graphic a clean. And just note also, we've got ourselves a nice clean environment here as well. So, okay, so we're going to familiarise ourselves with the graphic, with the decal and the plastics. And we're looking for little things like, there's a notch in here to help it fold over. We've got a, a point up here and another notch in here. So they're, they're little registration marks we can use for applying. So the first thing we do is just get the backing paper started on it. So we'll slide that back. This is where I like to use scissors, but you can use a knife if you like. So I generally cut them like that. And I cut about a, a 20 mil strip out of them. What I do is, so I'm sure that I've got the decal around the right way and line it up with the graphic so that I don't stick it upside down and stick the paper to it. So I'll stick that back on. And by leaving this little piece of adhesive exposed, this is going to help me with pinning the graphic into place once I've got it registered. So we'll come back to our little spot. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go, that's a pretty obvious area down in the back corner here. So we'll pin that. We'll look for our other little area there. Looking for this other little area here. That all looks like it's really nicely lined up. The other area there is lined up. So I'm just gonna 
touch it to find my piece of uh, exposed piece of exposed um, adhesive. So we'll rub that down, give it one last check over. Yeah, we're pretty happy with that. So this is called the hinge method. So what we do is we pull that back and we just let it slide on. And we just rub to the edges. I'm not going to worry about this edge at the moment. I'm going to come back and do that with the, um, with the heat gun that we have here. So, pull the rest of the adhesive off. Try not to touch it with the glove, with the fluff. But you can touch it with your skin as long as you've got clean hands. And then we'll just work this down to the edges again. I'm just working till I feel those edges roll. No, it's just nice, nice, nice and light pressure. It doesn't have to be heavy. Okay, so that's down. Now we're going to roll the edges. All we have need to do for that is just a heat gun, and we just wave nice, even heat over it. Don't go in close because you can burn your graphic. Just till I start to see it go a little bit soft. What I'm going to do is find the, find the edge and just roll that over the edge. It's like butter. And so, okay, so we've got the whole decal down now. So now what I'm going to look for is a couple little things. Like you notice I've got a little edge there that hasn't gone down. So what I'm doing now is just running my finger around the whole outside of the decal with good pressure. And if I did have something that was overhanging, well, I, uh, I haven't really gone here, I've nailed it, but um, I would just grab my blade and just run it along and take it off a few mil off the edge. And there you go. Beautiful, mate. Thanks, mate. No problem. See you out there. I think it's really important to be upfront with you in terms of where I'm getting the parts and what I'm paying. And I'll be frank with you, I'm not paying anything for the parts. These companies, I've approached them and they've provided the parts to me to make this build. But it's, it's not that someone has just said, oh, here, have a free part. It, it doesn't work like that. I'm not interested in that. I have sought those manufacturers out, those suppliers out, because that's what I want on this bike to make this bike the best. So yes, I am being provided the parts uh, free of charge, but they're parts that I've selected. And I think that's a very important difference. It's just not what people are pushing onto me. And there's no money changing hands in terms of what I put on this bike. This is my build and I can do as I want and I'm free to do as I want.